Tires, motors and chains, always a hot topic here on Ask EMBM. And today we've got a guy who wants to extend the travel on his Levo and another who's complaining about a whining motor. Whining, love to get rid of some whining. How about your whining? Without further ado, we'll start off with that question on a whining motor. It's from Kevin Reed, and he says, my bike is a Lapier Overworld AM400, but the motor has never been quiet. I appreciate it's no way a top end bike, but is, is there any way to quieten the whir from the motor? Mm. Am I okay with removing the cover, but what's the best way to lubricate the motor? Well, one thing you definitely shouldn't be doing is actually lubricating the motor itself. Um, a lot of the different manufacturers' motors sound different, so I think the quietest one from my experience is going to be the Brose motor, and obviously you've got the Shimano and Yamaha and Bosch. They tend to sound a little bit more mechanical. I don't know what you think, Steve. Um, the thing is, the, the motor is hermetically sealed, so you don't actually need to touch it, and most motors are good for, I think, about 20,000 miles, which is a huge amount of riding. Mm. Your bike will probably wear up before that, but I'm sure you already know this, but to quieten a motor, I do actually find that there's a, a variation between the motors from, from the same brand sometimes. Definitely, and you know, even the manufacturers, how it's built into the bike, like a Shimano motor, say in a, um, a Canyon, is gonna be different to a high bike, just the way even things like the down tube sort of um, uh, makes that sound louder sometimes, yeah. you know, a big speaker basically. Definitely kind of it, it, uh, echoes it. Mm. But, but um, Kevin, I'm guessing this is a, this is a Yamaha motor, Chris, mm, on I this particular so, yeah, yeah. bike? Yeah. Also what happens to affect the noise of your bike is how much you weigh. Now, lighter riders, if uh, I was I was in the Alps last week with a guy who was 58 kilos on a specialized Levo, and I'm more towards the 90 kilo mark. 100. And uh, with a backpack, definitely. And it's, it's quite interesting how much the sound differs between a lighter rider and a heavier rider on an e-bike. So one way to quieten the whirring motor might actually be to get your weight down to 50 kilos. Mm -hmm. But then again, I don't know how much you weigh in the first place, Kevin. And obviously just don't confuse it with any drivetrain noise as well. Just make sure your chain's all lubed and you're keeping everything spinning nice and smooth and you shouldn't hear any excessive noise. Anyway, Ken Belbin, he's saying, you guys have a special relationship with Specialized. So maybe you could ask the design team. Whoa, 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 whoa. We've got a relationship, Specialized is one of our partners. Mm -hmm. uh, so as there's can, uh, Canyon and high bike mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, uh, he's saying, is the Levo design capable of variations in travel, 160 mil travel plus, and compatible with coil spring shocks? Well, it's funny enough, I've actually seen, sorry to interrupt, um, there's, uh, I've seen some guys in the Frosted Dean actually mm -hmm. with some coils on their Levo, it's nice. like amazing. Yeah. And I've got a friend actually who's been testing a coil shock on his Levo, mm -hmm. and um, it actually makes the bike a lot more, a lot more supple, so, um, I guess it comes back to your rider weight, though, right? But to change the travel, mm -hmm. I guess Ken is looking to go for 160, did you say? Yeah, 160 mil plus. Right. So you need to change the shock yoke as well, as I understand that, to be compatible with a coil. That's yeah. Available quite but, widely. But would you put 160 mil travel fork on the bike? I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference. No. Uh, because well, it's, it's going to raise your bottom bracket. Mm -hmm. The thing with the Levo is you can adjust the track, adjust the, the geometry on it. So it's a case of you could put the 160 mil fork in the lower setting, but yeah. if, putting a putting a 160 mil fork in the higher setting is going to make quite a high bottom bracket on that yeah. bike. So so is he asking that actually on the rear though? Is the Levo design capable of variations in travel 160 mil plus with coil springs? So does he mean adding extra 10 mil of travel in the rear? I guess so. So um, obviously that's going to raise things and what's it going to steepen the head angle? Yeah. Raise the bottom bracket? Yeah. So it's going to affect the geometry massively. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, Ken, um, I've ridden some pretty challenging terrain on mm. the Levo. Um, I personally am quite happy with the, with the balance of the front and back of the bike as it yeah. is. Like, like if you are going to put 160 mil on the back, you're going to have to bump up the front end of the bike to make it have some good parity between the front and the back. So. And obviously when you start adding travel as well to the rear end of the bike, um, you might start experiencing stuff like tyre contact on the seat tube under full compression, mm -hmm. just not quite designed to have that. Maybe just 10 mil extra travel could create problems elsewhere as well, so. Yeah, maybe maybe just try uh, changing your tyres on the bike maybe. Might yeah, be, it might be a, a better, better move. And we've done a video all about geometry as well. Check this one out. 
Now, what about the numbers? Well, if I'm riding a bike, which is 150 to 170 mil travel, I'm looking at about 340 to 350 millimeters on the, back, on the bottom bracket because that keeps my center of gravity low. And when it comes to cornering, it really gets into those corners so much uh, more easier than a bike with a higher bottom bracket, which actually tends to stand the bike up and not corner quite as easily. Yeah, lots to think about there for geometry on your e-mountain bike. Uh, Frantisek SRAM, or SRAM Frantisek, whichever way. Uh, hey guys, I'm a big fan of GMBN, EMBN. Cheers. Fine, thank you. Uh, cheers for the great content. Could you please help me find the right headlight for my giant full E plus SX Pro EMTV from 2018? Chris, you're, you know about your lights. A little bit, yeah. I had a little scout around, checked it out on Google, and actually the Bush and Muller range looks compatible with the Giant stuff. It's got the right voltage, got the right connection, so should be well away with that. Lots of different price points and you know different levels of lights on there, but what do you think about all this plug-in lights yeah, to the uh, batteries? Yeah, well, I haven't got much experience with it. Uh, mm -hmm. I tend to use a light in motion, which mm -hmm. is got a strap for the handlebar and then the battery, which I usually tape onto the frame with mm -hmm. some masking tape. Nice. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, go ahead, maybe try yeah. plugging in a Bush and Muller. Huh? All, all the exposure range is kind of the lights that I tend to use on night well, riding. Head, head yeah. yeah, it's got a built in battery all combined, so it's quite slim line and lightweight, so you're not taking any uh, battery output away. But yeah, so loads of different options there. Shinya, Shinava. Shinava, yep. I have a Hartel EMTB, which I use to commute 55 kilometers per day. The bike came with 29.26 Nobby Nicks, but I'm also almost exclusively riding it on the road. Is there another tire size that you can recommend that will have lower rolling resistance and longer battery life for my ride in? Commuting, Do you know what? Steve? I was, uh, did a podcast with uh, Ollie Beckinsale mm -hmm. earlier today, and uh, he's a former world cross country racer. Do you know what? The tyres the cross country racers use are 450 grams. Oof. 450 grams. Pretty lightweight. Now, I guess if you're going to go for, uh, you know, you could do, you could ride su such a tyre on your on your mm -hmm. bike. Depends on the type of terrain you're going on. Yeah. We get constantly asked questions about tyres. Uh, so you're looking for a hard compound. Low profile, low volume. So you're looking at about a two, <coughs> two point two tire. Yeah, that's what I run. The yeah. problem with it is, is if you put a two point two or a two inch tire on your bike, it's going to lower the bottom bracket. So you need to be really, really careful with your bottom bracket height. Mm. Pedal strikes, pedal strike. Like yeah, yeah. Well. But what I don't, uh, a lot of people don't actually realise is twenty nine. 29 inch wheels are actually 700C, so the same size as a road bike or a gravel bike. So you can actually go down to those super slimmer tires as well, hard compound, perfect for getting the miles in. Obviously you don't want to go too skinny because on a wide rim, like a 30 mil, 35 mil rim, it's really going to blow that tire up. But there is other options there. So take a look at that as well. Right. Just don't go too skinny. And tire pressure as well, 60 tire PSI, pressure. 80 mm -hmm. PSI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Brian Bathgate asks, would an aggressive tire run at maximum PSI for cross country be the best of both worlds. Um, I think my minions can go up to 60 psi, uh, which is crazy, but would that not make the heavier tire faster rolling over the smoother stuff? Yes, of course it would. Uh, if I'm somewhere in like in Leithen in Scotland, I ride my psi by 40 to 50 up and then 20 to 30 down. That's a great idea actually mm. to do that to pump a tire up. Yeah, it's absolutely. quite a ball ache yeah, to yeah. do it, but um, yeah. Uh, I think the thing, thing with uh, aggressive tyres tends to be obviously the tread pattern which is going to be taking a lot of range and a lot of energy. Usually the compound on those tyres is going to be softer as well so it's all about getting that balance right isn't it Steve with pressure, tyre compound, tyre volume, tread pattern, things like that's what's going to take the yeah, battery range. Yeah but if you're riding if you ride in a downhill mm. a gravity orientated bike park then yep. I think number one is to go for the softer compound tire just to give you confidence in the trails. Mm. I think you're doing absolutely the right thing here. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. You know, I ride um, Minions or Asa guys most of the time and um, just because it's just much, it's much more fun than having a hard compound tire on uh, technical terrain where you're getting bounced around, you've got no grip or anything mm -hmm. like that. Terrifying. And you've done a video all about tires. Check this one I out. I love tires. Now this is a typical trail centre track, a man-made surface track which you'll find not only in the UK but in many parts of the world. As you can see in the outer part of this corner here, there's a lot of stones here and that's because the fine material has been washed out by the rain, leaving what's quite a coarse surface which is quite actually quite rough uh, on the hands and on the bike. 
You can see here on the inside of the corner, there's a lot more surfacing to the left there. It's really smooth. So the difference between that part of the track and this part of the track will probably require a different type of tire to get the best out of the terrain. Donny7971, he's saying, ask EMBN, you guys rock. Oh, it was quite a late night on Saturday. Um, have you tested the Schwalbe Eddy current tires yet? Yeah, seen horrific pictures of Eddies losing their teeth, but that probably was just a first faulty <laughs> yeah, batch. Yeah. Don't like the butchers on my Kinevo that much. Any recommendations? Mm. Do you have anyone lose any teeth, Steve? Uh, Eddy or? Mm, not really, no. Um, I mean, I guess if you ride in like shale type terrain mm. with sharp rocks, then you, you're gonna, you're gonna do that. But, you um, shredding tires off, and sometimes that first batch of tires can you know have some production faults, but Nothing we've heard except for good stuff about the Schwalbe Eddy Currents. Yeah, I mean the butchers, the butchers are quite hard compound mm -hmm. tyre. Maybe swap to a, a soft compound butcher on your, on your bike. Might, yeah. might be a, uh, might help. Yeah, and we've got obviously a range, big range of Maxxis tyres on, Schwalbe's, got obviously the Eddy Currents and Michelin's as well. Lots of tyre talk this week, yeah, Chris. Yeah, we have got lots, lots of, of rubber, tyre talk. rubber talk going on. Uh, let's move on to chains. Bit Chain. of steel. This is from Stanley. Stanley. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, do you want it? Ah, uh, yeah, why not, why not? Go I just bought a, my first e-bike, a KMC uh, X10 chain, mm -hmm. or sorry, 10-speed chain, mm -hmm. uh, for Rosemoyer. If you're, in your experience, which chain's models are the most durable? I just kill expensive and light SRAM 1091 chain in my non-e-bike, mm -hmm. six-week-old bent when changed front gears, high power. But SRAM 1030 or 1050 never fail in the same situation. What is your opinion of chains? So when it comes to chains, I tend to buy the e-bike specific ones because sometimes I think if you go too lightweight with the chains, they tend to stretch. As you, we, we all know like the drivetrain on e-bike is super susceptible to excessive wear. And I think if you're going lightweight on the chains, you know, like with drilled side pins and things like that, you're going to start obviously accelerating that problem. So don't be tight when it comes to chains then basically. No, I think buy an e-bike branded one and it should mm. last a bit more. But the SRAM chains, the Shimano chains, mm. I mean, any, any you know, yeah, KMC, all, all all good chain manufacturers. Yeah, and I think as we talked about on the show, it's really important to keep on top of all the lubing, cleaning, and taking care when you're gear shifting as well, up and down the cassette, just make sure you're not crunching through those gears. Right, before we start, I want to point out there are actually e-bike specific chains on the market, just like this KMC one, which is coming up on screen now, or a Shimano one, or indeed a SRAM chain. Now, this is an EX1 chain because it actually says so on the chain. I want to point out that this is actually a e-bike specific drive train on this bike. So you might be asking what makes it e-bike specific? Well, we're talking in general thicker chains, thicker cogs, and a generally more robust uh, group set on your e-mountain bike. Next from John Holmes, sorry, Paul Holmes. Paul Holmes, yeah. Uh, he's saying, hi guys, my friend and I just did a ride yesterday and whilst not looking for puddles, we did ride through some deeper than expected yeah, water. why not? Uh, will our bikes be okay? Any maintenance tips? Ooh, after all the water. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you need to get it dried out. Yeah. Water and e-bikes uh, are never a good combination, mm -hmm. really. But uh, not that not they can't kind of deal with it. Yeah, because we've been through some horrific uh, storms. Some bog snorkeling. Brandon, yeah. remember that shoot we did on the how many runs we can get in two hours? That was great. That was rain, wasn't it? Yeah. And the restricted oh. versus de-restricted. That was pretty nasty. Was it? Yeah. Was snowing then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this Steve Oh, said, yeah, that was a dark old day. It's horrible, wasn't it? Make sure it's all dried out and nice and dry in there. Get you the get hair some, dryer on it. Yeah, or water displacing spray. Just give it a quick squirt round. If your bike has got removable covers, not too sure what bike you're on, you can whip them off, make sure it's all clean in the motor. Mm -hmm. Obviously, don't go deep into the motor, just the outer plastic covers. Make sure it's all clean in there. As you say, a bit of a spray round, good dry out. <laughs> No problems. But that's it for this week's Ask EMBN. Don't forget, if you guys got any questions, hashtag Ask EMBN. Drop your uh, question in the comments box below. What video should we be checking out, Steve? Uh, tires. Mm -hmm. Tire video. It's all about the tires. And check out my commute video as well. Yeah, that one's tires, down here. Tires. Tires and commuting. Yeah. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Drop some comments in the box below. We'll see you next week.